Adventure. Tonight's story by Ron Evans is entitled Impossible Odds. The Napoleonic War was still raging when the small Liverpool registered brig, William and Mary, slipped out of a West African creek, her holds filled by 750 slaves. She was bound for the market of Kingston, Jamaica. The mass of humanity below decks had been bought from one of the numerous slave factories and consisted of prisoners taken in tribal wars, debtors and lesser criminals. Captain Hugh Crow, though a slaver, was as humane as a man could be in his position and did all he could to alleviate the anxiety and suffering of his reluctant passengers. The 40 years he had sailed from Liverpool to West Africa, from there to the West Indies and back to Liverpool, with a general cargo, had led to many adventures, but nothing so strange and terrifying as the one you are about to hear. It was late afternoon, some 50 miles off the West African coast, and Captain Crow was taking his nap. The sea was calm, and a light breeze blew out from the mangrove swamps. Sail on the starboard bow! Pass me the telescope, Jackson. Yes, here you are, sir. Looks like a Frenchman by her rig. Hmm. Yeah. Could well be. Oh, she is, madame. Better go and call the captain. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, what is it? Uh, there's a sail on the starboard bow, sir. A Frenchman, I think. Sure of it? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Morgan agrees with me. Oh, very well. Tell him I'll join him on the poop in a minute. Elvin, ten points to port. Aye, aye, sir. Ten points to port. Right. Right, steady as she goes. Steady as she goes, sir. Afternoon, Mr. Morgan. Give me the telescope. It's a French one for certain, Captain. Uh, you're right. A Navy frigate. Oh, look! Look! She's, she's turning towards us! I should have her before nightfall. With a lot of luck, we could keep ahead till then. Heldman, 45 degrees to starboard! 45 degrees to starboard, sir! Break out some more arms and ammunition and put the boys on standby in the magazine. And the guns, sir? No, don't run them out yet. Just keep us ahead of the wind and I'll call out the hands. All hands on deck! All hands on deck! All hands! He's gaining on us, sir. Then start praying she doesn't catch us before dark. It's our only hope. She's got at least 70 guns to our 30. And double our speed. Blast! Where's the British Navy? I was told we had 15 frigates patrolling these waters. Second sail astern! Telescope, Mr. Morgan. Oh, could be one of us. Uh, I'm afraid not. She's another froggy. Same class as the first. Bearing down on us, too. Well, we haven't a chance if they catch up with us. We'll be blown out of the water before we can reload for our first broadside. Then so be it, Mr. Morgan. I certainly don't intend spending the rest of the war in a French prison. We've enough ammunition and powder to make a long fight of it. If only we could run into some Navy ships. <laughs> we have, Mr. Morgan. Wrong Navy, though. All hands are at the station, sir. Ah, uh, Mr. Jackson, yes, very good. Now then, I want you to send the boatswain's mate, Phillips, down below to the slave decks. He can speak your oboe and ebo. He is to tell the slaves that we're likely to have an action with the French, and they must not panic. If there is any danger of the ship sinking, they'll be released. Aye, aye, sir. The slaves could be a problem if they manage to break loose. Between them and the French, we'll be in a hopeless situation. Oh, I think you're wrong. You're taught at the slave factories that the worst fate that can ever befall them is to fall into the hands of the French. Oh, why is that? Is there such a difference? A very big difference. Oh. The French take their slaves to Guiana, where they can have a life expectancy of three to four years. <laughs> They'll know it's their lives we're fighting for as much as our own. Yes, well... 
It's starting to get dark now, sir. Uh, we're lucky in as much as there's no moon tonight. Uh, those frogs are gaining on us too much for my liking. The nearest is still about four miles off, sir. Yes, but another mile and we'll come within range. I doubt if we They're can... signaling, sir. Uh, can you read it, Mr. Morgan? Oh, hmm. Oh, it's in French. Huh. Telling us to heave to. Oh, my name is Crow, not Chicken. Send back a signal saying... Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, yes, in French saying... We drink a toast to a big hole in your sails. But we haven't that many flags. Do it word by word, then. Go to my cabin for a glass of sherry and a change into my best ring. Call me if there's a change in the situation. I'm sure the old man thinks this is some kind of a joke. I've sailed with Captain Crow these past six years, sir. And when he jokes... It means he's a very worried man. You keep your eyes on the compass and speak when you're spoken to. Sorry, sir. Thought you was talking to me. Ah, Mr. Jackson. Did you see in Phillips down below? Uh, yes, sir. I think it's a dangerous idea. Imagine 700 slaves running amuck in the midst of a battle. It horrifies me. In all due respect, sir, I think the captain is right. We can't leave those poor folks down there chained up to a sinking ship. Poor folks, indeed. They're not the same as us with feelings like us. You want to be chopped in half by some wild black wielding a cutlass? It only seems right to me, sir, that we should let them go. I don't think the crew will tolerate it. See how close those froggy ships are now. Ah, it's getting dark. Another ten minutes and uh, they'll be searching blind. There we go. They're opening fire. Yeah, a warning shot. If only there was something we could do with a hopeless situation. A little brig like this can't hope to fight two heavily armed frigates. We can try. Stupid heroics. That's what I thought. Sure, don't expect us just to strike our colors and surrender, sir. Uh, I don't know what to do. That's Captain Crow's responsibility. That's right, right, Tan. I'm sure he'll see us through. I wish I had your faith, Mr. Jackson. He's an excellent ship's master, but I'm sure he can't perform miracles. Mr. Jackson, break out a hog's head of rum and get the boy ratings to issue a full cup to every man. Aye, aye, sir. And uh, order the boatswain to open the gun parts and run them out. Boatswain! Run out the gun. Well, it seems like we're going to have to make a point of it. If you're a religious man, Mr. Morgan, I suggest you start saying some prayers. It's only prayers and an ample supply of gunpowder that's going to keep us out of a frog prison. Or out of heaven. Or Hades, my boy. <laughs> and I'll see you down there. <laughs> As darkness closed in, the crew of the William and Mary waited, decks cleared for action, the gunners holding tightly their slow-burning tapers. Pursuing ships came up from astern, their snipers high in the rigging, preparing to rake the British brig's deck with pistol shot. The Englishmen watched as the enemy separated and drew level, one on each side of their ship, but keeping their distance. Why don't they grapple and try to board us? Because if our gunners were to fire low, he couldn't fail to hold both of them below their water lines. It's more likely they'd ask us to surrender. After which we expect a cannon duel. We'll wait and see. I've posted ten men in the rigging to keep down their snipers. Uh, down below there's a ship for you. Where are you from? English, sir. They're English, sir. Uh, don't be taken in by that, Mr. Morgan. It's an old French trick. Uh, wait till they draw exactly level with us, and then I'll give them a reply to their questions. Be two and prepare to receive the boarding party. A little more. Just a little. We're going to fire first, sir. You're yeah, darn right. I need to take the initiative. If my gunners can damage their gun decks, we might stand a small chance. Well, as you say, sir. We're lucky there's no swells who upset our aim. Uh, quiet. Get ready to give the signal. This this is it. Are you ready? Ready, sir. Fire! 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 Keep the gunners firing, Mr. Jackson. Oh, we got both of them. Right to the gun, Paul. Wonderful. Yeah, took them by surprise. Haven't even answered our broadside yet. Right to the gun, Paul, again. Here it 
down the mizzen mast. <laughs> we shan't be needing it for a while. For three hours, the battle raged. Crow's first broadside had indeed done its work well by disabling a large number of the enemy guns. But still, the odds were terrifyingly against him. His crew of 40 men were falling fast under the withering fire from the snipers high in the halyards of the enemy ships. Exhaustion also began to take its toll among the British sailors. This is what the enemy captains had been waiting for before closing in, grappling and boarding. Captain Crow watched from the poop deck, knowing that it was now all or nothing. One glimmer of hope glittered in his mind. He moved across the splintered deck to where his first mate, Morgan, was helping to put out a fire. Mr. Morgan, come out of there a moment, please. Yes, sir. What do you think of the situation? Well, uh, do you want the truth, sir? Should I say what you want to hear? The truth, man. Oh, very well. I think our position is hopeless. We should surrender. Oh, so you're resigned to a froggy prison. There's no choice, sir. Oh, but there is. We've plenty of guns and powder. Oh, that I know, sir, but we've no men to fire them. Oh, no. Go and find Phillips and send him up here to me. Oh, not the slaves, sir. Do as I tell you, and be quick. We need them here on deck before we grapple. Phillips went down into the slave galleries. He found the conditions were frightful. Many had died from injuries caused by the enemy broadsides. Over the roar of battle, he told the men what was happening as he released them. The ones who were unshackled went about and unchained the others. Phillips then led them up to the arms locker and issued them with weapons. The first mate, Morgan, watched with misgiving as the slaves flooded out onto the shot-swept deck. It's your madness, Captain. And it's madness to have 700 able-bodied men chained up down below when we need every scrap of help we can get. And if we succeed in fighting off the throngs, what then? Do we just politely ask the slaves to return the weapons so we can put them back in chains? By heavens, no. I swear that if we see this battle through, I'll sail back to the coast and release them. But the cost, sir, you'll lose a small fortune. If we're captured by the frogs or killed, I'll have lost the fortune anyway. And at the moment, Mr. Morgan, I'm only interested in saving my skin. You, too, I should think. Oh, true, true, I'll admit. Look! Some of them are running around aimlessly. The froggy snipers are cutting them down like grass under a sickle. Go out there, Mr. Morgan, and organize them. Phillips is doing his best. Uh, uh, Mr. Morgan, they're moving in on either side of us. Send some of the men up into the halyards. Take charge of the starboard side and cut away the drafting arms when they throw. We can't afford to let them board us. Harrison, take 20 of those slaves into the rigging. The ones who have and can use muskets. Oh, aye, aye, sir. And you, Bellamy. Line up all the men you can along the bulwark and have them ready to repel boulders. Oh, no, Mr. Jackson. Are, are you losing many men? Yes, sir, but many of the ones who are running around blind, they don't know what to do. Uh, I've just come up from the gun deck. We've only five guns left, two to port and three to starboard. Well, even five guns will show the frog if we don't intend to surrender. Oh, that's the spirit, laddie. I think they're already sorry they took us on. We've got so many men shooting and shouting. The frogs must think they're dealing with a disguised man of war. Ah, you're right. I'll go and see how Mr. Morgan's getting on. Meanwhile, keep those slaves firing to dissuade them from coming too close. Well, I'll do my best, sir. How is it, Mr. Morgan? Well, the frogs are keeping their distance, now, sir. Ah, wait to them. Wait till day night. And the CO decks flooded with men. It won't make them fall off in gate will they, sir, will it? No, I shouldn't think so. But the longer we hold out, the better the chances that one of our own Navy ships will appear. Well, they can't be far away. I feel it in me old bones, Mr. Morgan. Then we'll see those darn frogs run for their lives. I wish I had your face. I so do I. The withering musket fire from the small British brig's decks succeeded in keeping the opposing ships at bay. By the ninth hour of battle, 
All three vessels were badly damaged. There came a lull while the opposing ships ran their undamaged cannon over to the other side of the ships to replace the damaged ones. A tactic that could be disastrous to the tattered and weary defenders. During the lull, Captain Crow paced the poop. Ah, uh, they're very quiet. What do you think they're up to? I can't say, sir. They could be planning to back off and let us go. I never. They still have us firmly in their teeth, and I'm sure they won't let go now. It's cost them too much. How could they ever report back to their admiral that they were beaten off by a miserable little slaving brig like this? <laughs> no, never, Mr. Jackson. What else would they be doing, sir? I'll make a wild guess. See, they're replacing their cannon. And so the future looks bleak. Ah, here's Mr. Morgan. Let's see what he can make of it. What are they doing over there, sir? Uh, I was going to ask you that. I was just telling Mr. Jackson that they could be bringing over fresh cannon. Well, at the event, we are finished. A few broadsides will sink us. Yeah, I'd agree with you on that point. Uh, perhaps they're waiting for daylight. Yeah, it could be so. I wish you were right. It might give us the chance we need. And if it's true about the cannon, sir? I hope you can swim, Mr. Morgan. No, I can't, sir. Well, it's all so hopeless. Why don't we just surrender and get it over with? Not while I'm in command of this vessel. I'll have no more talk like that. Well, I wish we could see what they were doing. Sir. They wish they could see what we're doing. Uh, they are they're trying to... No. Oh, Captain, uh, have you been hit? Uh, Here. Uh, no, no, I've got hold of him. Are you all right, sir? Yes. yes it, it's my leg. We'll take you down to your cabin. No, Danya. I'll stay here in the poop. Put me up here against the binnacle. Sir, I insist. Mr. Morgan is right, sir. I'll get Davis, the cook, to come and dress the wound. No, I say. There's nothing much happening out here. I'll, I'll call you out of the situation. Change yourself. Oh, blast. It hurts. It hurts like blazes. Very well. Call Davis to my cabin. Well, we'll do that when you're comfortable on your back. No. Now, careful now. Yeah. If you could, if you could raise that... Make a trifle. Yeah, I'm trying. Yes, that's it. I'm heavy, you know. More than 20 stone, I'm told. Oh, well, we'll manage, sir. You'd better, laddies. I'm grumpy when I'm in pain. Ah, drink this, sir. <laughs> Davis has done a nice job of removing the ball from your calf. Uh, darn pain. Uh, look, it's still bleeding under the bandage. Yeah. You better get back on the station. Very good, sir. Daylight. If we can just hold to daylight. I'm so sure the British Navy is somewhere. Pity the old man got in the way of that ball. There were a few hundred around us worth of. Only because he's too damn stubborn to give in. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Morgan, but I agree with Captain Crow's decision to fight off. You poor heroic fool. How's he now? Oh, he's fallen asleep. A mixture of exhaustion and brandy. Look at the dark shapes of those Frenchmen out there. If only we knew what they were planning. Nothing that will do us any good, Mr. Morgan, I'm sure. I made a check of our losses. Twenty-one crew and a hundred and eight slaves dead. Good heavens! A full port. And another. Oh, they're going to finish us now. Oh. And both sides at once. What a mess. The ship will never survive another broadside like that. They're reloading. We must do something. I'll call out the captain. No, Mr. Jackson. Stay here on the poop. I'm in command while Captain Crow's out of action. But you can't do that. He's, he's only asleep. I can do anything while I'm in command. I want you to... We have renewed our cabin. Are you ready to strike your colors or be sunk with our next broadside? You have one minute to reply. You hear that? Now I must call the captain. Stay here. Rawlings, run a red lantern to the masthead. You can't do that. It's surrender. That's exactly what it is, Mr. Jackson. Too many lives have been lost already. Pass me the live hailer. Is there by your feet? 
Get it yourself. I want no part of this. It, it's mutiny. I'm going to call the captain. Ahoy there! We submit and are standing by to receive a boarding party. We are standing one on now. Disarm your crew and have a weapon set for the boatswain. Who are you? What vessel? The British brig William and Mary bound from Bunny to Kingston. Captain! Captain, wake up! Oh, blast that brandy. Captain! Uh, what is it? Oh, Sir Jackson, has something happened? Yeah, look, I'll help you, sir. The first mate has surrendered to the French. Surrendered? He surrendered my ship to the frogs? I'll kill all the swine. Countermand the order and tell him to report to me. Now, this very instant. I'm afraid it's too late, sir. The French are already sending up a prize crew. Oh. They should be boarding at any moment now. Oh, Jackson, why did I ever make the mistake of leaving the poop? That traitor will pay for this. One day, somewhere, me, a prisoner of the frogs, I'll be the laughing stock of the Liverpool waterfront. Oh, oh my damned leg. I suppose those Frenchmen will make me walk from La Rochelle to Paris like this. You should lie back, sir, and wait for them to come down here to accept your submission. Never, my boy. I'll stand up like a man and do it properly. Pass me my sword. Sounds like they're coming now, sir. Open the door! I'm ready! A magnificent action, Captain Crow. I'm honored to meet you. Uh, uh, who are you? I, I mean... May I introduce myself? I am Captain Moresby Smythe, and this is Lieutenant Giles, both of His Majesty's Frigate Dart. At your service, sir. Royal Navy! Quite correct, Captain. We thought we'd been fighting a, a Frenchman all night. Oh, worse, we thought we'd been fighting, too. It was only too true. The British frigates had been captured from the French several months earlier and had been taken over as patrol vessels by the Royal Navy. The surviving slaves were released as free men and, to Captain Hugh Crow's amazement, instead of the trouble he expected, their lordships of the Admiralty presented him with a medal for his gallant defence in the face of impossible odds. As a matter of interest, Captain Crow holds the distinction of being the owner of the last British ship to carry slaves legally when the slave trade was abolished a few years later in 1807. This story was based on fact and must be one of the strangest stories ever recorded in naval warfare. Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Duffenthal. Mm -hmm.